Hey everyone, Dr. Clark on The Place for Answers. And I gotta tell you about something that, that bugs me. It's something to do with ANA antibodies. Now that stands for anti-nuclear antibodies. And it's a marker that a lot of doctors will run on someone who they think might have a rheumatoid disorder, right? Some type of arthritis or lupus or something like that. The problem is, is they don't seem to really care much about it. I mean, I, I've got several patients. I got one thing right now, her name is uh, Kathy, who uh, I think it was about four or five months ago, she tested positive for ANA antibodies. Well, guess what that means? Once you've got antibodies at a level that's high enough to be flagged on a lab, what that means is you have an autoimmune condition. It means that your immune system is making little strobe lights to help your immune system find something and kill it. So ANA antibodies are anti-nuclear antibodies. Now what that means is your immune system has laser sighted onto a part of your body, your body tissue, your cells, and said, hey, that thing needs to be killed. Now what's funny to me is that most doctors that I run into and the patients that have seen these doctors, they don't do much about it. Pretty much what they do is they wait and see how you do. Now that is the that is pretty much the approach to autoimmunity uh, in America right now, which is let's just wait and see until your tissues become totally destroyed and that way we can give it an A. We can call it lupus. See, it's the difference between kind of the pathological way of looking at this and the more functional, uh, nutritional way of looking at this. If you have ANA antibodies, what you have is an autoimmune tissue reaction, okay? You don't have an autoimmune condition yet, right? Because there's no name for it. For you to have a name, you know, your tissue has to be destroyed kind of permanently enough so that then we can look in our book and say, oh, you've got lupus, you've got scleroderma, you've got, you know, insert name of condition here. But even the name doesn't change really what's happening underneath. What's happening is your immune system has turned on you. And the very next question should be, why did that happen? Why did your immune system turn on you? Why is it attacking you? And I gotta tell you, that, that answering that question right there takes a little bit of know-how, takes a little detective work, and it's just unfortunately not something that most doctors in the mainstream model are gonna do. All they're gonna do most of the time is wait until your ANA antibodies get higher or wait until you have more symptoms, until you get enough criteria that to meet some diagnosis, and then we get to give you steroids and say basically, hey, uh, you know, good luck. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I think that's a really uh, ineffective way to do it. I mean, Kathy, for example, you know, she's had this pain in her foot. She's had these other pains. And, you know, she goes to this doctor who means well, by the way. I'm certainly not trying to, you know, uh, demonize him. They mean well, but they run this test. She's positive, And then they don't do anything else about it. So when she comes to me with that test, I look at that and go, hey, well, here's the problem. Uh, you have an autoimmune tissue reaction. There's some detective work we got to do to figure out how to help get your body back into balance and support you to figure out how we can do to, to, to manage this thing. And it's just not something that doctors uh, in the traditional medical model are going to do. And the wait and see thing, uh, really, I'll give you another example of that. For example, if you um, have islet cell antibodies to your pancreas, right? Well, if you have islet cell antibodies, the research shows that that's pretty much predictive that you know, you're going to get... <laughs> Uh, type 1 or type 2 diabetes, depending on how old you are. If you're a kid, you get type 1, right? But if you're older, it gets, looks like it's type 2, but it's really the same problem. Well, studies have shown that it takes you losing 80 to 90 percent of your islet cells in your pancreas to be gone forever before you get diagnosed uh, with type 2 diabetes or type 1, right? Now, if you have antibodies, for example, against your cartilage, right? And remember, that's just another kind of antibody. If you have cartilage antibodies, no one cares until you've got deformity, you know, in your knuckles and your hands, and they can say, oh, you've got rheumatoid. See, that's the problem with that sort of approach to these, these issues, these autoimmune issues. I mean, autoimmunity really is probably the greatest health epidemic that we face, and no one's really doing anything about it. Uh, not in my opinion, there's certainly not. So I just wanted to rant for a second and tell you, look, if, you, if by the way, if you've got ANA antibodies that are positive, well, guess you have a problem. You have an autoimmune tissue reaction that if you leave it alone and don't find someone who can help you figure out why it's like that, then pretty soon, it could be five years, maybe five weeks, you're going to have enough tissue damage that the doctor will finally pat themselves on the back and say, hey, we know what you have now. It's insert name here. And really what you had was an autoimmune tissue reaction that needed to be addressed a long time ago.